I want to welcome you guys to the SOLIDWORKS 2019 launch event. My name is Jeremy Browning. I'm an application expert here at MLC CAD Systems. Uh, if you're looking at that picture and you're counting, yes, that's three kids, and no, I don't sleep. My position at MLC CAD Systems as an AE gives me access to a lot of tools. Now, with the release of 2019, I don't know if you guys have been noticing with SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS is way more than just CAD anymore. There's a tool for every single step in your engineering workflow. Whether it's simulation, or regular old CAD, or flow, or electrical, there's something to allow you to design with the SOLIDWORKS suite of products. I'm gonna walk you through SOLIDWORKS and Mastercam, and I'm gonna do that showcasing how I design these speakers. I'm gonna guide you from start to finish, from conceptual all the way to manufacturing. All right, it's gonna be really cool. I'm gonna take you from concept to manufacturing, okay? And now with conceptual design, that can be very difficult, right? Especially if you just have an idea that you want to kind of get down really quickly. Maybe you're at the airport, right? You don't have space in that airplane because you're crammed in anyway already. So maybe you need space to put your mouse, but you don't, but you have a touch screen, okay? With that touch screen, what we can do is we can edit some sketches right here on the screen, okay? So I'm gonna take this and start editing my sketch. You're gonna notice that I have a tab called Sketch Ink. All right, ink with touch. So this is gonna allow you to get your ideas down really quickly, even when you don't have space for some really cool tools. All right, with the release of 2019, they now support the Microsoft Surface Dial. All right, that's a really cool tool. I'm not that fancy. All right, there's also styluses that you could use. I don't, I'm even not that fancy, but I do have these fingers, okay? So you can design with your fingers, get your ideas down really quickly. So you're gonna see me do this live, this isn't a video, okay? I'm gonna just draw a line, tell it it's horizontal. Now check this out. That's really easy, right? You just draw a line with your finger. The next step would be to what? Dimension it, right? We're gonna have good practices. Yes, we're gonna dimension this thing. Fully defined sketches. Well, perfect, that's two. It's amazing, right? Let's take this, and we're gonna do something way more complicated than that line. We're gonna do an arc. Way more complicated, right? Perfect. Got an arc. Check that out. And I can say, you know what? It's 12. Okay? Now, I wanna make sure that I get this thing coincident. So let's take this point, and hold, and get that point. I wanna make these merge fully defined sketch using my fingers. Well, let's take this and let's finish this design off, okay? I want to take this and I'm gonna do a mirror entities and we're gonna extrude this. This is a, a general idea. We wanna make this be eight inches tall, okay? We all know how to extrude, amazing, all right? Now, what's crazy about this is you know how to use this touch interface already. Does anyone have some device in their pocket that has a touch screen? Yeah, everybody does, right? Perfect. You already know how to do this. That means you use one finger and you rotate. You use two fingers and it will pan or zoom in or zoom out, okay? You already know how to use this touch interface. So go back to work, use your touch screen if you have one and bam, you know how to use this. Maybe you want this thing to look a little neater, okay? Maybe you want some draft. So I can come in here and add some draft. Maybe I want some four degrees and we're gonna draft it from here and I wanna draft the outside faces. We're getting there, kind of getting a rough conceptual design. Maybe this is exactly what I needed so that I can send it to my coworkers and be like, man, this is what I was thinking about this speaker, all right? It needs to look really nice and curvy. I don't want just a regular extruded block. Well, maybe you also wanna convey a little more information, all right? Maybe you wanna show, maybe I wanna tell Roland, hey, I wanna add a tweeter and a woofer, all right? So I want a big old woofer on here, so I'm gonna tell him exactly where I want it. I can insert what's called a markup view. Okay, with this markup view, I can say, I want a tweeter right here, and I want a big old woofer right there. Okay, you just using my fingers. Get out of here, I'm gonna rotate around, and we're gonna go normal up here. I wanna show him how I want this crossover. Now a crossover is like the brains of the speaker, okay? But I wanna show him 
what I want on that crossover. So maybe I want to show them that I'm going to cross over right here. It's going to have a couple components, maybe a component there and a component there. All right. With that, I can easily define exactly what I want. So I can get out of that view. You're going to notice if I go to isometric, I can see exactly what I was sketching on there. That's not regular sketch entities. That's just like drawing with a pencil on the screen. Pretty awesome. It's a really good way to make notes. Okay. Another thing that we have is the ability to work with mesh data. Mesh data can be tough to work with. Now, I want to show you something that actually is mesh data. This is an imported STL. And I can show you that by showing the edges. And that looks really tough to work with, doesn't it? You look at that and you're like, nah, you close it, go to the next project. <laughs> yeah, you're like, no, I don't want to touch that. Well, check this out. I have the slicing tool. I just tell it what face I want or what plane I want and how many of them I want to offset. So I'm going to do nine at like an inch. Those are 2D sketches. I, I, as a SOLIDWORKS user, know how to handle 2D sketches. We all know how to handle those, right? So let's get rid of this mesh body. Nobody wants, nobody wants to deal with that. Ain't nobody got time for that one, all right? Now, what I can do is I can take a loft, and I can go from this sketch to that sketch very easily. Lofted surface. We know how to do that. That's easy. So maybe this conceptual design was scanned. Like this one right here, we made out of wood, all right? So sometimes you have very uh, ergonomic parts that are like maybe modeled out of clay or wood or something like that. And then now you need to get that into your engineering data. That can be tough with those scans. But now with your slicing tool, you can do just that. Okay, it's fantastic. Maybe you need to show something that's really difficult like knurling. Okay, with, with knurling, you, may, you might just call it out on a drawing and say, this is knurled. And then they have to figure it out in manufacturing. Right? Well, maybe you want to take that a step further, and we can add a color or an appearance, and I can drop this on here, and that's some knurled appearance. Maybe you want a little tighter, so let's edit that. So we're going to pull that in. We got a little tighter knurling. Right? Now, you can show that on a drawing and say, this face is knurled or this body is knurled, but let's take it a step further. Okay. Notice that this is a black and white image that I applied to that. With that, I can then come in and now use this 3D texture tool, turn on my element size to get a really good mesh, and then create a knurled body. Check that out. That is awesome. Would you want to create that using surfacing? No, I wouldn't. That's when someone brings in a job like that. And we're like, we need a real knurled surface. I'm going to say, go away. But now you can do it. It's really easy. All right, maybe you can take a, a map and you can put it on a flat face and you can pull it out. So you can make topological maps. Uh, Kyle Norman out there, our 3D printer guy, has a part that we did just that. Okay, go out there and check that out at the break. So now, I want to take you away from the conceptual phase, and let's get into the real hard engineering of this speaker. All right, now I'm going to talk about everybody's favorite part of design, and that's talking to those electrical guys. They're so crazy, those sparkies, right? So let's get that out of the way first. So I want to take you through this speaker and kind of what this speaker is about. What well, you're going to see in these, pic in these pictures, the smaller speaker is a tweeter, the larger one is a woofer, it's got a vent tube on the back, but most importantly, the crossover. Now again, this crossover, this is the brains of the speaker, okay? So sound comes in, and then it uses what's called filters to filter them out because each one of these speakers reproduces the correct sound for that frequency, all right? So we designed this crossover in-house with all these components. So let's get that out of the way up front, okay? Let's go over here to the PCB tool. Now, this is SOLIDWORKS PCB. If you guys aren't familiar with it, maybe you guys are using Eagle or Pads or Altium or something like that, and maybe not even you guys. Maybe your coworkers are using that. Well, if something like that rings a bell, come up, we'll talk, and maybe you can use SOLIDWORKS PCB. But we designed this, all right? I didn't know how big this board was going to need to be, so I just made this gigantic rectangle. You think that's going to fit in the assembly? Probably not. Not unless we have this massive 
massive um, speaker housing. All right, I'm going to put on my, my mechanical engineering hat, and I'm going to edit this sketch. I'm going to get rid of this, and I want to bring in the right shape for this board. All right, we all know how to do that. It's very easy inside of SolidWorks. All right, so now I have this crossover at the perfect shape. We've updated it. Now, at this point, I could save this. Now I need to give it back to the electrical guy and say, make sure this fits. Make sure I didn't blow out some holes or some components removed or anything like that. So I can turn on what's called the SolidWorks PCB connector. All right, now here I can push this. I'm going to push this back to my ECAD guy. I'm going to say board final. Hopefully it's not a final final. We never do that. So right here in the mechanical space, I just pushed it and said, we're done. Okay. I can even save it and say, you know what? That's exactly what I want. Perfect. And if I jump back over to PCB, I get a notification, right? If you're working, boom, live, you get a notification. It says, this has been updated. And here's what updated. If I hit view changes, I can then click on it, and the board outline went from this really rough rectangle to this nice smooth shape that'll fit perfectly inside of our speaker. Hopefully, the ECAD guy is going to accept it and not yell at you. And everything works great. All right, so none of my components are off the board. Everything works flawlessly. That's beautiful. Now, moving from a circuit board design, we go back in to SOLIDWORKS Electrical. But one more thing with PCB. Check this out. This is probably my favorite thing with PCB, actually, is the ability to have, through the connector, the real traces shown here in the mechanical space. All right? These are not decals or nice images. These are real physical traces representing the copper inside of the board. All right? These are solids. What can you do with solids inside of SolidWorks? You can add flow simulation to them all right? or heat transfer. Figure out if you're going to turn one of these traces into a fuse. That's never good, okay? So you can simulate exactly what's going on with this board with the new PCB connector. So now that I've got everything correct in my assembly, I need to wire it up, okay? And I can use SOLIDWORKS Electrical to do that, okay? This is a new uh, a separation here. We went from the circuit board to like a system design, okay? Now I need to route these wires. If you come up here and see in these clear housings, we actually have some red and black wires and some connectors. So over here in SOLIDWORKS Electrical, you're going to see that I have this project. And inside this project, I have some schematics. Now this schematic shows that I have some wires running. All right. Now looking at this schematic, I don't really know what that is. But the beauty of this is these are not dumb lines on paper. All right. These are very intelligent. It carries a lot of extra information or metadata like wire color, gauge, uh, bend radius, a lot of that kind of stuff. So we're going to take this 2D representation of our speaker and go back over here to mechanical space. And in the mechanical space, I have access to the exact same components that the electrical guy has specified. Well, I've got a couple more connectors to place. I got a positive and a, ne and a negative. So just right click and choose insert. Now what's beautiful about this is the fact that the electrical guy is the one that has specified exactly what to put in. All right, so as a mechanical engineer, you don't have to go, well, I wonder what connector he wants, because he's the one that has to specify it and put it in the right place. Now, I want to show you a couple one-button tools. All right, now on the electrical tab, it runs inside of SOLIDWORKS as an add-in. All right, it's a one-button tool that you hit route wires and hit your green check. And what it does is it sees all these connectors and their placement inside the mechanical space. All right? And it says, perfect, I need a red wire and a black wire. How are they connected? Well, the schematic says how. That's the intelligence behind those wires. Okay? And it's going to route all of these components inside of our assembly. It's going to pull the gauge. It's going to pull the color. It's going to pull the bend radius. All right? It's going to route these right here in our assembly. So all you have to do is specify the connections inside your schematic, and then your 3D assembly is just a representation of those connections. Now, over here in electrical, there's a couple new enhancements that I want to point out to you guys. All right, if I need to detail the and finish this schematic, I need to put a connector in. 
Well, if I insert a new connector and tell it exactly what it is, I can pull in like a WAGO 232 connector, which is an eight pin connector. All right, maybe I don't wanna have all eight pins. I wanna show four. Now notice with 2019, you can show this connector is broken or foreshortened, all right, for a mechanical term. And then I can place this right here on my wires. Perfect. Now the tool's still on, but I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna go to a different page because I don't want the rest of this connector on that page. I actually want it on this page. Well, if I hit the insert connector button, it even knows that I was just doing that. So I can say I want to continue to insert that connector. And it sees the four that I've already used and then the four that are available, all right? And it still shows it as broken. I don't even need to put it right on the end. I can drop it right on top of the wire and it's gonna break the wire for me. That means O snaps aren't a thing. This is AutoCAD anyway, right? Take that. Now maybe I need to generate a bill of material. Has anyone ever generated a bill of material before? You're like, maybe, what is a bill of material? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is generate a bomb, all right? Which is a bill of material. Now, it was always the bane of a project. At the very end, you're done with it. I'm just like, oh, I have to create a bill of material. Well, with SolidWorks Electrical, it's doing it right here for me, all right? It's generating a bunch of pages over there on the left and it says, I'm done. That used to take me hours inside of Excel. Tons of fun in Excel, right? Engineering in Excel. Well, check out this bomb. If I go over here, it even hyperlinks all of the connectors and where they're used. So I can right click on this and say, I wanna see where that component is. And it automatically jumps to that component in the tree. So if you're ever looking for a bunch of stuff inside of a very large project, it's right at your fingertips, all right? Now, maybe you're creating some harnesses, and this right here needs to be added to a harness. Well, it's really difficult. You guys don't blink, because if you right click and you choose add remove from harness, you can say that you wanna add it to a harness, you wanna add it to H1 and select. That just got added to a harness, all right? Really difficult, right? Well, maybe we wanna show that harness actually routed. So if I open this harness up, you're gonna notice that this harness has already been routed. Now, to route something using SOLIDWORKS Electrical, it takes an EW path, it's just simply a 3D sketch. But this one was routed with no EW path. So in 2019, you don't have to create EW paths anymore. All right, so it's a little less setup. Now maybe we wouldn't need to edit this route and I wanna show a wire label or maybe some braiding on this, on this harness. Well, we can do that with 2019. If I go add a covering, I can add a fixed length covering. All right, this is fantastic. I can say that I want this offset just a little bit and it's just a one inch label. Perfect. Ah, uh, Windows juice, sorry about that. Yes, make that. So I can represent like a transparent label. Check that out. All right, so if maybe you have some braiding, maybe some shielding, some labels, whatever you want, you can add a bunch of these fixed length coverings to represent wire labels, all right? I have the exact same tree in electrical as I do in SolidWorks, okay? That means that I can open up an assembly right here. So if I open this assembly, this is another harness that's been routed in, in uh, three-dimensional space. But maybe I need to get this thing manufactured. Well, to do that, we need drawings, right? Just like mechanical parts, you need a drawing that somebody can read to make it. Well, that's very easy to do. You right click and you choose flatten around. Tell it where you wanna flatten around, like this piece right there. It's gonna make that piece horizontal and then flatten it out and show you exactly what this thing's gonna look like and give it lengths, all right? So it's gonna flare out the ends. And then here's another one button tool. You hit create 2D drawing and it's gonna open up your drawing using the regular standard template and it has anchor points with all the tables and it's gonna place them exactly where they need to be. You're gonna see all the balloons for all the parts, all the bill of materials, all the wire lengths, everything that you need to get this harness actually manufactured. Here's another one button tool. You hit create project drawing and it adds it over in electrical, all right? So it's really easy, really easy to do. Well, let's take this assembly, 
All right, this assembly right here. This is a simplified version of the exact same speaker. I actually have a configuration that's even further simplified. Okay, we've hit some stuff. Now I want to talk about flow simulation or CFD, computational fluid dynamics. Now those electrical guys did their job, but let's make this mechanical team work now. Okay, and I want these guys to prove that this board doesn't get too hot, doesn't overheat. I want them to make sure that we have enough airflow going out of our port tube. Okay, maybe I want to make sure that our airspeed isn't so high that it creates noise, because then the speaker's going to sound bad. Well, you can accomplish all those goals with SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, okay? Now, you're probably using models that have material already, so that's perfect. All you have to do is import the materials from the models that you're already using. Import data from the model. Easy. It's beautiful. You're already ready to rock and roll use, using flow simulation. Now, with this one, I want to show you that there's some heat sources on our resistors and our inductors. Maybe I want some pressure on our speaker cone. Now this pressure is time dependent, okay? It's gonna oscillate back and forth, just like a real speaker cone would at a specific, spe wow, specific frequency. Words are hard sometimes. So we're gonna see this changing over time, okay? So if I close out of this, some of the best things to come out of flow simulation are the results, okay? The setup is, it, it is what it is. It's fun, kind of, but it's not like this, okay? These videos are worth, what does they say? A picture's worth a thousand words. What is this video worth? Engineering dollars, that's what it's worth. Money, okay? Because we can see with this one, this is a transient plot, so it's over time and what's happening to the air flows. You can see these arrows flipping back and forth as the pressure is changing. Obviously, it slowed way down, okay? Now what about this one? This is a static point in time, but it's showing the, the velocity of the air and how it's flowing through that port tube. So you see the air speeds up when it gets smashed down in that port tube. All right, this is my favorite one. This one, it's showing a bunch of studies overlaid at the same time, okay? We're seeing the air flow across the board and the heat dissipation of the board or the heat transfer on the board. And then we're also getting these surfaces that build up. These surfaces, We've, we've specified to build a surface anywhere that the air speed goes above three miles an hour, okay? So that way we found that at four miles an hour, we're gonna have problems. So we're gonna check at three. The real hard engineering data is there as well. So if you want some heat flux plots to show how heat is being transferred from one component to another, you can do that with, with flow simulation. You can do section cuts, and you can see some surface parameters on those section cuts, right? And with 2019, you can have custom visualization parameters. Maybe inside the speaker, you wanna find out where uh, the decibels are reaching above some level, all right? Or maybe below some level, because you wanna jam, all right? Rock. Now, I hope that you guys have been taking screenshots as we go, because now we gotta get some buy-in, okay? We gotta get our marketing team off our back. Anyone ever have to take screenshots inside of SolidWorks? And then you give it to a customer and they're like, that just looks like a CAD model. You're like, yeah, but we're gonna build it. Well, what if that screenshot, instead of looking like this regular old screenshot in SolidWorks that you use Snagit or something with, it looks like this. We created this before we even made anything using SolidWorks Visualize. Okay, this is how you can get buy-in from your customers and they want stuff before you even make it, all right? Maybe they're like, that looks good, but I want it candy apple red. And you're like, tough. Maybe you want some headphones to go along with it, right? Now this is just a CAD model. What's cool about SolarWorks Visualize is the lines between the real world and the CAD world are really blurring, okay? So it's really tough to tell if something started life as a CAD model or if it's really just a picture. Now, with the release of 2019, NVIDIA has released an AI learning tool, and it's called the Denoiser. So when you're making renders inside of SolidWorks Visualize, it goes 10 times faster. That's way faster. That means if a render took an hour, it now only takes six minutes. That's amazing. That's tons of engineering time removed from your computer. All right, this actually released with 18 SP4. That means if you're running that now, go back to work, 
turn the denoiser on and save some time, but don't tell your boss. All right, you're welcome. Now, more on Visualize is with 2019, you can now turn on a real-time physics engine. Okay, this physics engine, maybe you can drag this over and turn gravity on, say, boom, gravity on, and all these cups fall. We want to see if they break or something and how they land. And then with that learning technology, those learning robots, that AI technology, your renders, bam, they're done. Okay. Another great enhancement with 2019 is if you're using cars, you can drag components over to select the wheel components and then choose from any of the presets for vehicles like minivans like I have to drive or a truck like Roland gets to drive. All right. And then you're going to see this thing just take off. It's going to render a video. And so I rendered a video of Ro Roland learning how to drive his gigantic truck. Can't drive real straight. Okay. Now, one of my favorite enhancements is the ability to add decals. Now, this isn't just a regular decal. This is a video-based decal, which will allow you to make this MacBook look real, like a real computer, maybe. Those MacBooks. Also, you can have these videos show you that this speaker's never going to let you down. It's never going to give you up. That's right, I just rick rolled the whole room. Take that. So with Visualize, you can see that that AI denoiser is going to save you tons and tons of time. All right, NVIDIA released those learning AI robots. Now, another tool that is very similar to, to the SOLIDWORKS Visualize is SOLIDWORKS Composer. All right, but Composer kind of takes it up a notch because I know that I used to have to take apart a complete assembly we're done building this thing. We're like, good, perfect, it works. Now take it apart so we can take pictures of you putting it back together. Nobody does that, right? You're like, no, not at all, not at all. Well, if you're using Composer, so we can open up SOLIDWORKS Composer, and you can create images using your CAD model. All right, You can see that I can rotate this thing around. This is a real CAD model. But you can also add what's called actors. These actors will give you more information whenever you're trying to take screenshots. So instead of having your gigantic finger in this picture showing what this screw is and where it goes, you can have this arrow right here. Okay? And so you can go from one step to another step. And now if you have all your steps set up, it's very easy to come in here and make a video. It says, this is how we're going to put this speaker together. End user that doesn't know how. All right, so creating technical documentation documentation using uh, SOLIDWORKS 2019 Composer is amazing. All right, a couple new enhancements with Composer is the ability to come up here and search. So if you're looking for the translate tool, you just search, just like in SOLIDWORKS. All right, so this makes your learning curve way, way less. Okay, another thing is whenever you have a locked view, you have this gigantic padlock to really indicate that this view is locked and nobody can mess with it. Maybe Roland's going to open this up and he's just going to break it all. So I have to lock it. <laughs> Another thing is to be able to integrate directly with PDM. Amazing. Let's look at a, another output type from SOLIDWORKS Composer. All right. First one I want to show you is Word. All right. Technical documentation. So maybe I want to create something like this. All right, how many steps to insert. So you create all those images of each step and how you put it back together, and then you take those images and output them to a Word file. Now what happens whenever the model changes? Because those customers, they keep changing their mind. Well, what's beautiful about it is these are linked images, which means that if you update your CAD model, you then open Composer and say, update from model, and then output images, and these images update. It's fantastic. You set it up one time, and it doesn't matter. Just keep updating your CAD model. Another thing, I think my favorite output of SOLIDWORKS Composer is HTML content. Okay. Now, this HTML content, it looks like this. This is a web page. This is running on my computer inside of a browser. Unfortunately, right now, it's Internet Exploder, but whatever. If you hover your cursor over one of these, you're going to see a highlight screen whether you're in the graphics area or the bill of material. Maybe we had to ship these speakers across the southern U.S. and we broke one. That didn't really happen, maybe. But maybe we broke something on the crossover. And if you click it, you notice it's like a hyperlink taking you to a new page, which means that you could have your customers go to your web page and see this HTML content. 
and dig down. Maybe we broke this one, this inductor. We can verify with a part number or visually that this is in fact the inductor that we broke and you can click it and go all the way to an order page, which means you don't have to have someone answer in the phone and saying, okay, which part? Okay, can you tell me again which part? Because they can go find it. Okay, that's my favorite output of SOLIDWORKS Composer. But the fact that it integrates with PDM is fantastic. Okay, now even when I'm doing a really small project with Roland and he's breaking everything, I'm gonna put everything in PDM. Okay, now this is a very simple workflow you can have very complicated workflows, but PDM is product data management. And if you're not using PDM, you should be, okay? Because everybody has to store their engineering data somewhere. If you lost all your engineering data, you, that's like losing money, okay? So it's a very typical thing to notify people when a part goes from like under approval to approved, all right? That's called a transition. You can see right here that we have a notification for a manager, all right? Now, I wanna show you something that's really cool. With NUA 2019, you can have, con excuse me, conditional notifications, which means that if a part is purchased or not purchased or some variable, you can have it looking at that variable to figure out, do I need to notify this person at all? What's the worst thing about notifications? Is if you get over notified, <laughs> all right? If you ever get like 30 emails from one person in a day, you just like shift select and delete them all because you don't care. Well, that's what you don't want from PDM, right? You want it to notify when it matters and you can do that now with conditional notifications. Now, another thing that we really force all of our engineers to do is to enter a note, all right? I want all of my engineers to enter a note when you take it out of, out of approved state because those engineers, I need to figure out what the heck they were thinking along the way. Okay, so I will force them to enter a state change comment. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. Now that used to be a global setting, but it no longer, okay? Because now my engineers, when they submit it to Kyle for 3D printing, they don't have to enter a comment because same thing with notifications. If you over notify, they ignore. If you force them to enter state change comments every single position, then you get like a dot and that is not helpful either. You guys are laughing. You've obviously seen those notifications. Now, if, <laughs> if you are using Windows domain, so Windows logins, that can be tough, okay? So if I add a new user, it can be tough because you're using your Windows domain to log in, but if you need to add like someone outside of your company to access your engineering data, what do you have to do? You have to talk to IT. Nobody wants to talk to IT, right? Because you got to get IT to actually do something, right? Well, now with 2019, you can just have a mixed mode. You can say, I want a new user, a new PDM user, so they can log in with a PDM login, even though you're using Windows domain. I'm going to open up my vault. And on this part, you're going to see that I have a part type. And that's what it's looking at to, for those conditional notifications. So if it's not purchased, notify someone, all right? This part right here is actually a sheet metal part, and I can prove that with the preview tab. Okay, you can see that that actually is sheet metal. If I were to right click on it, I can manually activate a task. With 2019, you can now have automatic sheet metal creation for flat patterns. All right, that means a sheet metal part, when it goes through the workflow, it can get triggered to create a flat pattern. You don't have to have users do that anymore. Amazing, yeah. So you can see over here, I created a flat, that right there was created using a task. All right, now the, print, the main preview mechanic inside of PDM is e-drawings. I'm gonna open up e-drawings. Now this is the exported DXF of our circuit board, okay? Now what's cool and I really like about e-drawings is the ability to open anything. So if I hit open here, look at all these file types. That is a ton of file types, including added in 19, JT, NX, Creo. Okay, that means you take anybody's files and open them in eDrawings. eDrawings is free. Okay, that means you can go download eDrawings and open up any CAD format. Now, my favorite enhancement with eDrawings is not necessarily the ability to open anything. It's the ability to save as this new type. Okay, and this new type is HTML content. If I save as, you're going to see an eDrawings HTML file. 
So this is running inside Chrome. And what's cool about this is I can rotate this. I can look in, zoom in, zoom out, do whatever I need to do. This is eDrawings in a browser, okay? So we can go over here and look at your configurations. You can look at your feature tree. You can section this model. You can move the sections around. But my favorite thing on this is if you forgot to explode it, you can explode it right here. Pretty fantastic. You can also zoom in and we can turn on ambient occlusion to make this thing look a little more realistic, okay? Maybe you have a bunch of predefined views and you wanna show it rotate through all your predefined views. All right, it's almost like a video, but it's HTML content. This is like sending this to a customer. This is like just open it in your web browser. You don't need to install anything. It's fantastic. Now, another cool thing about eDrawings is the real configurations are available, okay? The real configurations are here. Boom, look at that. Those are the configurations inside eDrawings. Now, this isn't something that's brand new, but now you can add the configurations from the native files. You don't have to save it as an eDrawings file first. I'm gonna show you one more thing inside of eDrawings. Now, this is probably gonna blow you away. All right, and if you remember this, this is the assembly we used last year during rollouts. This is an RV. This is a larger assembly, all right? Now, usually why people just really hate eDrawings is it's slow. Right? There's no way to speed it up. You're, like, you're running eDrawings on this Haas computer and it's still slow. Right? I'm going to rotate around in eDrawings. I have 18, eDrawings 18 installed on the left. eDrawings 19 installed on the right. Okay? Same model is open. I'm going to rotate it over here. And you notice how these parts go away and it looks kind of chunky. That's by design, actually. And it reduces the load on your graphics card so it can move smoothly and then you can let go and it replaces all the graphics but it looks really bad to our eyes. So that sucks, let's get rid of 18. Get that out of here. And let's open up 19. Now check this out. I'm gonna do the exact same movement. I'm gonna rotate it. Look how snappy that is. It's amazing. It's just like SolidWorks. You can zoom in, none of the data, the data goes away. It's fantastic. So eDrawings in 19 is gonna just blow your mind. All right, now at this point, we've talked about PDM and we talked about eDrawings. But with PDM, I want, I want you guys to know that there's way more new in PDM than what we can talk about up here. So I want you to stick around for the second half because Roland's gonna take you through a very large design and how to manage everything. Once we've got all of our documentation in place, our real engineering has happened, and we've done our concept phase, it's time to actually make something because that's the point that all this engineering is for, right? It's to make a product. To make that product, you might need to get dirty. You might need to cut something or injection mold something. Well, what we can do is we can leverage Mastercam for SolidWorks, okay? Does anyone ever have a CNC or had something CNC'd? Well, you gotta create those tool paths and you gotta create that NC code, okay? Well, if you own Mastercam and you own SolidWorks, you already own Mastercam for SolidWorks. Just install it and it runs inside of SolidWorks. All right, that means you don't have to learn some crazy new tool. It's just an add-in, right? It's still inside of SolidWorks. So I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna tell it which way is up. So I'm gonna say, hey, this is the front, perfect. And then um, at this point, I need to come over here and tell it what my stock is, okay? So again, I'm gonna tell it zero, zero is the front and then I wanna choose my model, all right? What's beautiful about this is I have all my selection filters are still there, like bodies and stuff like that. So I can select that specific body using the SOLIDWORKS tools. All right, so now it knows what it needs to cut and it shows you that bounding box, the smallest stock size required to create that part. Now this isn't the first time that I've ran Mastercam for SOLIDWORKS. So that means that I can have some tools that are already pre-set up. Okay, so if I add these tools to both a three quarter inch uh, end mill for roughing and a ball nose for finishing, I have two tools. Now I just need to tell the software what we're gonna actually cut. So I can do that, and you see under these parameters, I have things like feed rate, spindle speed, and coolant, if whether it's on or off, a bunch of information about the actual tool itself. Just need to tell the model geometry of what we're gonna cut. And again, I can select using a solid body. Now at this point, I'm just gonna let this thing create some tool paths. All right, so it's gonna, it's gonna start thinking about this and it's gonna go through and say, perfect. 
We've got a toolpath. And what's beautiful about this, I need to copy this over to this one. Take this geometry, and I'm going to copy it to the other tool. And with this one, I can then create my tool pass for both finishing and roughing. And you're going to see the tool pass right here in the screen. So you're going to see the finishing and then the roughing. All right? What's beautiful about this is I can then simulate this. So I can say, that, hey, I want to see my tool here in SolidWorks, and I can see how it's going to go around. All right? You make sure that it's not going to collide with the part. All right? You don't want to make expensive mistakes, right? Well, let's take that a step further. If I come in here and turn on the simulator tool for Mastercam for SolidWorks, it's going to launch a new window. And in this window, I'm going to get to see the actual machine running. All right, I can turn my workpiece on and turn the real simulation on so that I can see the machine that we're going to cut this on go around and actually virtually cut this part. This is awesome because you're going to verify that you're not going to have very expensive collisions or you're going to break a tool or anything like that. 